Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got our resident Mustang here in the shop, and Brian, I have to ask you, man, are my teeth all right? You know, I'm not sure why you're asking. Well, I'll tell you what, I paid good money for them first off, but when I hit the brakes, man, this thing is chattering like crazy. I mean, I thought I was actually chipping my teeth. It was bad. Wow. Do you have any, any other symptoms? Drivability, you hit the brakes, pulling left, pulling right, anything else? Great question to ask. Matter of fact, it's pulling to the right a little bit as I'm driving along. Doesn't feel like an alignment, kind of feels like a suspension issue or something, mm -hmm. but really, when I stop, it wants to snatch it to the right and then straighten up. Well, there you go. I mean, that takes a substantial effort. This is a rear wheel drive car, and that thing should spin much more freely than that. We got something hung up, could be a caliper, sticking piston. We got a little investigation to do. Well, you're the brake expert, so you know, you might as well go ahead and do the full blown inspection while you do that. I'm suspecting that thing got hot and caused some pulsation. I'll set up a demo man you get to work all right well it certainly wasn't from him driving fast i think we've established that all right i've got three of the lug nuts off here let me get these other two so we can get a good look and see what's going on in here all right come down with our wheel down here in the bottom all right so typical good visual inspection you know you're looking for any kind of leaks back here on the brake line nothing dripping no evidence no tracks there Again, this guy is really hard to spin. So this caliper, a pad either inboard or outboard here is sticking. So what I'm gonna do is take this caliper mounting bracket off. It's a 15 millimeter on the back on this Mustang. Let me first see if I can work this loose and relieve that pressure. That's essentially overcoming that back piston to get that thing a little bit of relief. And that's spinning a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the caliper off here probably end up replacing this you have some choices you may want to rebuild it we'll get in there see what's going on and in the meantime john's going to tell you how this whole brake system works well we've been talking about pedal pulsation well how does it happen and what causes it well actually look at this graphic right here pedal pulsation is showing you where the rotor is going back and forth like this here and it's hitting the rotor well that really doesn't cause pedal pulsation. I'll show you why in a minute. But first of all, we have to make sure we eliminate that. And we're doing it with a dial indicator. We're measuring it. Well, check this out. I got it set up over to the rotor and I'm at zero. If I slowly turn this rotor around, wow, we're up to 10, 15 thousandths. And then I come back around to zero. That's 15 thousandths of run out. That's a ton of run out. But what really happens is that creates disc thickness variation. I'll show you how to measure that or a term called parallelism. You come here and you measure the rotor in eight different places. Now you don't want any more than about a half of a thousandth of an inch, not much of in and out of disc thickness variation. Well, why is that? Watch this. Let me tell you, three thousandths run out will go around in one mile. It'll hit that rotor. 836 times it'll hit that pad. So as it's hitting that pad, think about that. 6,000 miles, 5 million times you're hitting that. So what's happening when you continue to hit that spot there, it's going to wear an indentation in on that rotor. That's when you get that pedal pulsation happening. You're feeling that in the pedal. That needs to be addressed. Now, how do you address it? Or actually, how do you prevent it? That's what we're all about. Well, you can see here our caliper. Our caliper has a square cut seal. That's the only thing pulling that caliper in and out. So the pads contact the rotors, that guy has to work, so make sure it's lubed up. Now another thing you want to do is clean your rotor. Make sure you got a good mating surface inside and out, and put your wheels on with torque sticks or a torque wrench. Don't create your own pedal pulsation, Brian. I'll tell you what, I hear you. Certainly not from the way you're driving. Hey, on my dial indicator over there at the car, I first made sure our wheel bearing is good. It's true, so we're not out of oscillation from that. And I only had three thousandths of lateral runout on the rotor surface. So I think you actually caught the problem early. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, that machine will do a great job, but we're not going to end there. Go ahead and take your rotor, your yep. caliper. You, not, you want this rotor? Yeah. Yeah. That looks like the hat you wore to that last <laughs> event we went to. Absolutely. Well, Brian, we're almost ready to eliminate our pedal pulsation. Stick around. We're going to hit the Hunter Auto Comp Elite right after this break. There's plenty more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, we're ready to get rid of our pony pulsation, Brian. Absolutely, and tell you what, before we do anything with resurfacing the rotors, we gotta first check and see how much thickness we've got. So we got the mic here. Let's just come in and take a good reading. Let me get down over here, set my drag. Are we good? Yep. We got 1.06 inches of thickness, John. And spec says we could go down 
to .97, so we got plenty of rotor here to work with. Yeah, and you know what? We're going to make easy work of this with the Hunter Auto Comp Elite on the car brake lathe. Man, Love. this thing couldn't be any easier. This is so cool. Matter just wheeling it over to the car, 110 plug, bam, we plugged it in. Guess what? Brought it up to the wheel. Put the adapter on. How do I know what adapter to put on? Tells you right on the screen. Simple as can be. Torqued it down, went here, attached the machine. We're actually ready to compensate this thing. Now, That's cool right. part, Brian, Auto Comp Elite. It's going to do it all by itself, man. Here we go. Let's see. We tell it OK. Here we go. Speed it up a little bit. Let's all get right. it to about, about 80 RPM. 80. Yeah, 80s nice right there. 84 is good. All of a sudden, bam, look at that. Starts compensating. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, and bam, that quick. Wow. It just took that wheel hub, everything into consideration so it can cut and it can cut right. Now, hey, I love cutting brake rotors. Nothing hey. nothing like before. So a Absolutely. I'll tell you what, we didn't have to take it off the vehicle and take it over to the lathe like the old days. And there's there's certain times you would want to do this. Other times you would want to replace the rotor. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and set it up just like you would do a regular brake rotor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the back one. I'm going to take a scratch cut in the middle. I always like to do that. Hey, however you want to do it, that's fine. But I take a scratch cut just to know the distance so I'm bringing it in and I'm listening I'm listening and I'm listening bam I hit it good time to lock it so I can go ahead and lock it come over here do the other side unlock it come in for my scratch cut I'm coming in I'm coming in oh I hit it you can see it scratch see it. cool part is you hear the ch -ch 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 because that's that pedal pulsation that's the pulsation pretty you're neat talking about. now what I'll do is I'll run it in and it's nice man so smooth operation I'm coming in get on that inside lip right there Wonderful. Now I can come back out. I can open it again, open the bit, and I'll take about I'll take about a 4,000 bite out there. There you go. I know what you guys are thinking. 4,000 bite? No, that's too much. Hey, this thing's got round bits, anti-chatter technology. We can do it. So we're going to take this one out here, take a 4,000 on that guy bite, hit it. All I have to do now is lock it in. And you know what we're doing, Brian? We're cutting. We're cutting a rotor. Let's Just get, that easy. Let this thing get to work. Now let's talk about why. Let's talk about use cases here. You know what? A lot of hub assemblies on today's vehicles are really complex and laborious to get off and either take to a lathe and get returned or simply just to replace them, even though a lot of rotors are still affordable. But this takes all of that out of the equation. If you're taking your vehicle to a mechanic, have this conversation and determine, are you going to resurface my rotors or are you going to replace my rotors? Now, one thing to remember, at the beginning of this, he had a pedal pulsation. I checked that rotor when I pulled the wheel off. Sometimes you've seen a deep groove cut somewhere in your rotor, too deep to even resurface. We did not have that, which makes this one a really good candidate for the resurfacing job. If it had a big cut, big groove, we wouldn't be doing this. We'd simply replace it with a rockauto.com rotor. Now, a couple things. Why on my end as a professional technician? Well, man, guess what? Time's money, man. Every six tenths, I get paid. So I don't get paid sitting around. So number one, I hooked it up in no time. Number two, I'm cutting the hub, the rotor, the car. If I took this off and I went over to a rotor, Brian, or a machine, I'm at the mercy of the machine and that. I'm not just cutting the rotor, I'm auto comping the Hunter all the way through the whole vehicle. So I'm making sure the hub, the rotor, and the bearings are all cut precisely. That's cool. Also, you hear the motor speeding up and down, whoop, whoop, whoop. First of all, it's one of the biggest horsepower motors in the industry, yeah. so we can cut big old trucks. But Heck here's yeah. the deal. It's pulsing like that. It's got anti-chatter technology. It's actually sensing that. So you don't get those record grooves like you normally would. Yeah. So the pads aren't going to go up. And you got the round bits, so you can take the big bites. Yeah. So you're not going to get any chatter. You see any bands on here? No, it looks fantastic. That's the deal, man. I mean, think about the coefficient of friction. I'm listening. This thing's cutting. Time is money. Bam, bam, I, bam. I wouldn't even have this set up on the lathe over there yet. Nope. There Guess what? The edge. There's no edge. You hear it? Perfect. Slowing down. Voila. Hit Just stop. that easy. Yep. Just Making that easy. Hit stop right there. Impressive. Look at that joker. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, there are certain use cases. It's incredible the amount of technology that's out there and available today. Again, you probably don't have this at home, but have a conversation with your mechanic if you're going through this and decide what's best for you. But this is amazing technology. Yeah, man, I look forward to getting to the LS project. LS lesson, stick around. We're down to the meat and potatoes, man. We're going to pop the pistons out of that bad boy. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com.